everyone. Welcome back to another episode in SAP Tech Byte series on ABAP Core Data Services. Today, let's explore association and how to consume them in ABAP CDS. Association defines the relationship between two or more entities. So, this will help you to easily navigate, query, and access related data. Um, to define an association, all you need is association source and one or more association targets. Association target can be series view entity, series projection views, series table functions, uh, SQL views, and uh, database tables. Well, the recommendation is to use um, series view entity and uh, series projection views. Uh, the highlight of association is only when the association is used, it implicitly translates into SQL join. And this will improve the performance drastically. So now let's uh, see how to define an association and consume them. So for today's demo, I'll be using DMO travel as a data source and this is the CDS view entity that has been created. Let's check the data preview. Press function eight and to see the data preview, we have a travel ID, customer ID, there is a price with the currency code and the description. Uh, to get more details of uh, the customer ID, we can do an association. So now let's do an association and that is done after the select statement. The keyword is association, press tab, and then you define the cardinality. I'll come to the cardinality in a bit and then specify what should be the association target. So let us consider um, uh, I underscore customer to get more information of a particular customer ID. So you can always do control space to get the values and uh, this is the CDS association target and then I'm specifying the alias for it. So you can specify alias for ease of use instead of always typing uh, the entire uh, CDS view name you can always give the alias name. So and now we will give what is the condition on uh, this is where the association conditions should be specified. So now before that, now first let us see what is there in uh, DMO iCustomer. So here you have uh, the key as a customer ID and you have uh, various other uh, elements. So maybe we can do a join on the customer ID. So for that, we do that by uh, specifying dollar projection is where you specify what should be the, uh, the fields of this uh, association source. And since we have cus uh, customer ID, we say dollar projection dot. You can specify customer ID is equal to the association target, which is nothing but the alias. And dot again, you specify what should be the, the field, which is the customer ID. So this is how the association will be defined. So there are three parts to it. So this is the keyword association. You give the cardinality. And you mentioned what is the association target from where we need to uh, create the join condition. And then this is where the association condition. So whatever you specify after dollar projection, this, um, this element should be exposed in the select list. Otherwise, you will not be able to choose it. Now you see over here, this is the cardinality. The cardinality specify what can be the minimum and maximum values. So this means for every one data set of the association source, there can be uh, minimum, this can be the minimum and the maximum data set that is available in the association target. Since I have used uh, customer ID, that is why I have given us one to one. So there, um, because that is uh, the key where I have also uh, joined and for every record uh, in the association source, there will be one record in the target. So the most commonly used cardinality is zero to one and one to one. If minimum is not specified, then minimum will be considered as zero. Z let me change this cardinality and give zero to star. So you can see here there is a there's a warning which says like uh, this cardinality star does not match the on condition. So this the syntax check here it performs a possible uh, check of the maximum value of the cardinality. So most common use case for this uh, zero to star is while using the, the text views which has uh, translations. 
say like um, the currency code name or the country name so these wherever there is a uh, the translation in, is involved that is a common case where you can use zero to star so i will again uh, roll it back to giving us minimum and the maximum as one so let me just save this and you can see the syntax here it says the association is not used uh, that is because we have just defined the association, but this doesn't mean that it will be used in the SQL statement. So as I mentioned, uh, associations are nothing but a, a sort of a join. But the beauty of this is the join happens on demand. So to check that, uh, you can see the SQL statement here. And uh, there is nothing mentioned about the join has not yet been created. Now let us try to make this association as public. And... You just specify the alias and then, so this is how an association is made public. So once this association is made public, this means now if this view is consumed by another view, that means we will be able to access the fields which is underneath this association which is made as public. Now let's save this and activate. Control function 3 for activate. And let's see the data preview again. So let's refresh. And let's see what uh, what is the effect. Because we made uh, the association as public, you can right click and you have something called as follow association. You can choose any of the any of the cell. You can do the follow association, and you get this option uh, DM I, I underscore customer. So that is because we had made the uh, association as public, and to get more information of that particular selected record, you can do the follow association. And uh, you can see all the other details. So you can use this breadcrumb to go back to the data source of the source entity. Um, now there is something called as path expressions, which will uh, allow you to consume the elements of this associated target. Let us call the association target dot, and then you get the list of all the elements in the association target, which we, we can use it in the association source. So maybe let us take the last name and then we define it as the, the last name. So again, save it, activate. And now let's check the SQL create statement again. So if you can see over here, the join condition has been made. So this is the highlight of uh, the association that only by just by defining the association or just by exposing it, a condition, a join condition will not be done. So a join condition will be done on demand only when the element of the associate target is being consumed. Now let us try to check the data preview again. If you do function 8, you can see there is another column which has been added, which gives the, the details of the last name, which is coming from our associated target. Um, you can also add um, the filter to this path expressions. So for that, maybe uh, since we have currency, I will add another association. I will just copy the same and then change the values. I will try I to I underscore currency. Now let us check this I underscore currency. So if you see here for this I underscore currency, there is something called as I underscore currency text and where zero to star is mentioned. So this is big cause. Let us just navigate into this I underscore currency text, do a data preview. And uh, you can see there are various uh, languages and the currency name has been translated into various languages. So this is a typical example of using uh, zero to star because there can uh, there can be a number of uh, entries. Now let us try to consume this association. So again, I will choose underscore currency as the alias dot. You can see over here, I get underscore text, which is nothing but the association that has been made public in I underscore currency. So since uh, we are interested to know about um, the currency name, we can choose underscore text and then uh, see the uh, the available elements. So we have currency name 
and then let's give a name to it. Save it and uh, you can see there is a syntax error. So it says like this association it can modify the cardinality. The reason is underscore text has the list of all um, uh, the currency name in various languages. So now let's activate and see the change in the data source. So if you see here, you don't get the unique uh, uh, travel ID or the customer ID. That is because we are using uh, the currency name, which is in various languages, which, is, which has a cardinality of zero to star. And uh, that is why our data result has been modified. We can also add a filter and um, restrict the data set. So for that, after uh, you specify the filter after the association name. So that is here. Since we had seen um, language in the I currency text, we can add a language and specify the value. So here I'm specifying uh, the value E. Now let us save it and then again check the data preview. So now you can see the, the difference after applying uh, the filter condition. So the path expression with uh, the filter is reading only one currency name, each in English language. So since we know there will be uh, one value, we can actually document by adding one before the filter condition. So to do that, you can also see uh, there is uh, a syntax where it says like, yes, this can also modify uh, the cardinality because the, the filter condition, whatever we have specified, that cannot be validated. Since we know that there will be only one record because of the filter, we can add one in front of the filter condition. So here you can see the difference. The, the syntax uh, check is gone because we are specifying for this filter condition. We know that there will be only one record and there won't be any duplicates. So again, you can just activate and there will be no change in the data preview. So we are getting only the records uh, with the currency name in, in English language. Instead of hard coding here, you can also specify the input, input parameters as well. Uh, now let us see what is CDS composition. In ABAP CDS, dependencies can be modeled using uh, compositions. So a composition is a special form of association where you uh, define the, the relationship between two entities like a, what is a parent entity and what is a child entity. So a child entity cannot exist without a parent entity, but whereas a parent entity can exist without a child entity. So this kind of uh, relationship that you model is uh, will be using CDS compositions. I have defined another uh, CDS view. Uh, this is the booking demo. So here we are going to tell like this booking entity is a child entity and the travel entity is a parent entity. So that means a booking, a booking cannot be created without a, without having a travel ID. To format the code, always use shift function one. Now to define that this is a, a child entity, we are going to do an association to the parent. So learn, let's define an association, association to parent. So now we need to specify what is the the parent entity. So in our case, it is the travel association demo. And now here specify the association condition. Now this is the association condition. We are going to do the condition on travel ID. So you can see an error here that this travel must be included because we have made an association that it is the parent. And that is where you are going to define it as a public association. So this is how you are going to say like this is my uh, child entity and child entity should always be present with the parent entity and that's uh, this is the syntax for it. Now we can see there is another warning which says the parent entity does not have a composition defined. So here in the, the child entity we have defined like this is the parent. Now similarly in the parent entity we have to define what is the, uh, the child entity. So for that uh, the keyword is composition tab and then specify um, the cardinality. So for uh, this parent entity, there can be a number of child entities. So for one travel ID, there can be many bookings. So we say like there can be zero or many bookings, zero to star. 
So here we have told like this is the child identity and we have given the cardinality and then you can see there is an error which says um, the booking is not included in the selection list. So we'll do that in this way. Then you can save it. So this is quite important where you have to define what are what is the parent and uh, the child relationship. So using CDS compositions. And with this, uh, we have come to the end of the demo. We have seen how to define an association, what are the different cardinalities that you can specify for an association, uh, how to make an association public, how to create a path expression uh, to consume the element of the associated target, how to add a filter in the path expression to restrict uh, the data record, and how to define the parent entity and the child entity using uh, CDS compositions. And I will see you in the next episode in another interesting feature of ABAP CDS. Until then, see you.